Good day, this is Jim Pytel from Columbia Gorge Community College. This is Digital Electronics One. This lecture is entitled Common Functions of Combinational Logic. All right, guys, rejoice. We are way more than halfway there, and the finish line is in sight, and this is going to be a short lecture. That's the good news. The bad news is it's going to be followed by some longer lectures. This lecture, all I'm going to do is talk about the common functions of combinational logic. This is a rehash of kind of what I said at the beginning beginning of this course here. It is what are we creating? We are creating devices that perform some desired outputs. The, these are the common functions of combinational logic. And what I'm talking about, combinational logic, is actually what you've been studying this whole time. Basically, the outputs change when the inputs change. There is no memory involved with combinational logic, whereas sequential logic, which we'll be stepping into once we complete this series of lectures, is basically using time-based inputs, i.e. taking inputs from the past, comparing them with the present. Okay, but we are dealing with combinational logic. This is not all of the functions of combinational logic. It's not it's meant to be exhaustive. What I'm going to do is hit the largest parts uh, that are commonly used. Okay, The first one, in my opinion, the most important one, is never covered in digital electronics courses. It's covered in other courses, but the direct effect of the uh, digital electronics theories we've learned thus far have never been explicitly stated. What I'm trying to do is, is talk about motor controls and PLCs, i.e. switches, relays, and ladder logic, which you've learned already, and how they're applied to digital electronics theory. And we're also going to discuss the PLC, which is a programmable logic controller, which is kind of like the PLD that we've been using, the programmable logic device. Motor controls, that's kind of like fixed function circuits. So we're going to draw those parallels and explicitly state the connection between the digital electronic theorems and motor controls and PLCs, which we'll be learning a little bit later. Okay, the next function, these are adders. Okay, in its most basic form, what is a computer? What's what's the original purpose of the computer? It was just to do boring stuff. And one of the most boring things out there is just add up a bunch of numbers. I've already showed you using two's complement how we can use an adder to subtract. And all I've got to do is, is do addition a number of times and I perform a multiplier. If I do two's complement subtraction using an adder, all I've got to do is a number of times of performing division. So an adder is a basic function used in all computers. And how do we do it? We make use of ands, ors, and nots, and nands, and nors, and exclusive ors, and exclusive nors, and we use SOP, minimum SOP expressions using our KMEPs. Everything we learned thus far, it's a combinational logic function. While I teach adders, I'm actually going to teach you something really neat about VHDL. Okay, we've talked about data flow. You know, I've got an output and I'm giving it an expression ORD with some expression. You know, that's it's basically the logic that's assigned to it. We've talked about behavioral very, very briefly. And that's by all by no means is that the full description about uh, behavioral. Remember how he generated that truth table using the select statement? That's kind of behavioral. I'm going to introduce this thing called structural in VHDL. And I've previously made data flow and structural very, very, very similar. And some people think that there's a very clear definition uh, in between them. I, I kind of see an overlap between data flow and structural. Some people may disagree with me. Well, you're wrong because there is an overlap. And I'll show you that overlap. And structural, if you could imagine, remember our talking about ands and ors and nots. If you could imagine creating a reusable device that when the reusable device A is in combination with another of its type, with another of its type, and they're passing data back and forth, I could write this huge VHDL data expression for that whole device. Or if you could imagine making a data flow description or a behavior description for that matter for that device A and then reusing it a couple times. Structural, as the name implies, it's almost like creating a fixed function circuit. You know, you're creating this box with inputs that spits out an output, and you just take that box and connect it over and over and over again. So I'm actually going to show you the structural approach with VHDL using some adders. This is pretty neat. An incredibly powerful feature of VHDL is to take, it's to make a custom logic circuit, something that performs what you want it to do, and then reuse it over and over and over again. Comparators. So let's move on to comparators. What is a, and we will talk about VHDL for most of these guys here, not all of them, because we've got a long way to go, short time to get there. Comparators. It's comparing two numbers, A and B. There's two inputs, there are three outputs, only one of which 
can be true either a can be greater than b a can be equal to b or a can be less than b only one output can be true because if a was greater than b and a was less than b that doesn't make sense okay it just doesn't work if a was equal to b and less than b oops sorry equal and less than it doesn't make sense so the main thrust of a comparator there's always three outputs only one of which can be true at the time the next big block there is decoders, encoders, and code converters. Okay, so decoder, which we've talked about a lot about already. We've talked about the 7447 BCD to seven segment display driver. That's kind of a decoder. It's taking BCD. It's detecting the presence of BCD. And it's indicating that presence with an output. What's the output? It's a specific combination of LEDs. And like I said, with decoders, it's kind of like trying to nail jello to a tree to come up with a general description because there's so many different types of decoders. And the most general description is again, I'll write it out. There you go. Decoder detects a spread, the presence of a specific combination of bits on its input, i.e. the code, and indicates its presence with specified output. What is an encoder do it's the exact opposite it takes an input and spits out a combination of bits i.e a code think about a keyboard you know you're pressing a key what's it outputting it's the ascii equivalent for that key okay a code converter as the name implies it converts code let's say you got binary input and you want to make gray code for the output it takes that binary converts it to the appropriate sequence, the appropriate numer numeric sequence in gray code, BCD to binary, any of those things. It's taking an input and translating English to Spanish, Spanish to English, whatever it is. Multiplexers and demultiplexers. I'm going to clear this up here. So a multiplexer, if you remember right, it's kind of got this symbol right here. What it's doing is taking data input from several data sources. And it's got these select inputs. I should just kind of draw these as however many there are, dot, 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 dot. Same thing with select. And what it's doing, it's taking that data and routing it onto a single serial line. What is this data? Well, it's parallel data streams. If you could think of a multiplexer as a parallel to serial convert. What's well, a demultiplexer? Opposite world. It's a serial to parallel convert. And again, it's got select inputs right there. How does it do it? You'll find out. Basic thought pattern about this. The selects determine who is being routed onto that single line. It's an address. Okay, if the select says take position zero, the switch goes to there. If it says select takes one, you take position one right there. Same thing here. If they're sharing the same line, position one is sending to position one or receiving. So what they're trying to do here is it's almost like a postman. Okay, There's an address. That's what I like to think of the, ad, the select lines as. It's the address. Who is talking? Who is listening? Finally, parity. Parity is a means of error checking. And we've already referred to this in our binary new binary numbers lectures here. Parity is a means of error checking data that you have sent or received to make sure that you haven't accidentally transposed a zero for a one or a one for a zero. This is it, guys. We conclude this lecture here. Very quick, very short summary of what we're about to go over. Let's move on to each one of these things in turn, and let's start off with motor controls and PLCs.